I'm Latoya Smith, your guest host for this evening, and joining me is Ryan Mack, the president of Optimum Capital Management. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, as always. So April is Financial Literacy Month. That's yeah. a term that's thrown around a lot. I don't really think a lot of people know what financial literacy means. And you're on a campaign now on empowerment tours, working a lot within the community to make sure they understand that term. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to fill our audience in, what does financial literacy mean? Financial literacy is just really understanding what your money's for, understanding the purpose of it, understanding what goals you have and being able to use money as a tool to help reach those goals. Uh, really having a knowledge of uh, for every dollar that comes out of your pocket, make sure it's used in a responsible way. There's only three things you do with your money. You can spend it, you can give it away, or you can save it. Mm -hmm. And over 90% of our dollar is spent. And uh, so what financial literacy means is how do we lessen the amount of money that we're spending put more money into savings so we can actually have more money to give and uh, spend uh, mm -hmm. if, through saving, which is ironically funny because the less that you spend and the more you save, the more you can eventually spend and give back to your community. Right. And, and you know, it's interesting where you talked a lot about, um, you know, saving and spending money in your community. And I want to reference a blog that you wrote earlier this year. Yeah. In addition to the, your financial services company that you run, you also are a blogger. Um, I really like your work on the Huffington Post. And you wrote a blog that um, called A Question for Black People. Mm -hmm. What's your focus? And I want to share a couple of these stats with our audience. You wrote that 55% of African Americans are unbanked or underbanked, yeah. um, meaning that they do not have a bank account or the appropriate bank account. You also um, cite that about a quarter of Hispanics and 24% of black households, now this was in 2009, um, had no assets other than a vehicle. Yeah. Compared um, to 6% of white, household, white households. Yes, compared yeah. to that. And, and just to share another one, um, in terms of our savings, since you talked about that a little earlier, you said that the median amount that black households reported saving on a monthly basis is $189 mm -hmm. compared to $367 among white households. Um, who takes responsibility in that? I know you talk a lot about the community. It's mm. our job to empower one another. But do you think that the banks play a role in this as well in closing that gap and offering products, you know, maybe that people you know, can understand? I, I get a lot of um, arguments from people in our community or you'll see just like a lot of studies come out mm. where they're citing where these gaps are, but very few of them talk about the solution. So how do we change right. some of those statistics? It's funny. This is, this is the first time in over 10 years that the median savings rate for the African American has been under $200 a month. Right. But I, I think that when you're talking about what your focus is, it seems like those on the left say that the government is not doing enough, and those on the right say the government is doing too much. Mm -hmm. And the focus to me, it always, in, in either of those arguments, the, the common threat is the government, you know. And if somehow along the line, we just forget about the people. You know, what are we supposed to do about the people? What can we do? And the financial literacy is not about what the government can or can't do. It's not about what corporations can or can't do. Obviously, there are obstacles that... Uh, are presented that sometimes make things harder or make things easier depending on what actions they take. But financial literacy, you know, if, if the government has nothing to do, corporations have nothing to do with a black man being six times more likely to purchase a car, a luxury vehicle, than a white person. Mm -hmm. You know, the government has nothing to do with essentially 55% of uh, African Americans are underbanked if they know that you can actually go and get a regular bank account. You can go to smarterchoice.org you can get a secured card through bankrate.com. You can go to uh, open up a credit union. There are different things that uh, we have within our control regardless of what the government does, regardless of what corporations do. And this is what financial literacy is all about. And I kind of I want to shift the conversation back to more of a uh, what of an onus do we have to do? And this is this right. is not a democratic thing, not a republican thing, not an anti-corporate thing, not a pro-corporate thing. This is a pro-people thing, and that's what financial literacy really is all about. Mm -hmm. And in talking about the community, you wrote a book. Yeah. On it as well. Um, if you want to talk village. a little bit about right living in the village and talk a little bit about what what spurred that, what inspired you to write that book? Well, the bottom line is that the the, the village, you know, if it's, if it takes a village to raise a child. Right, the, 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 the strength of the children depends upon the strength of the village. Now, the strength of the village depends upon the strength of each individual member of the village. So, a village, uh, you know, it, I have to do more in order to help my children do better. And so, uh, you know, I would, I would say this poem, I would rather do for you than do for self, but I cannot do for you until I do for self. So, in order for me to better do for you, I'm going to do for self. So self-empowerment, if you remove the greed from it, can become community empowerment. 
There's nothing wrong with capitalism. There's nothing wrong with entrepreneurship. There's nothing wrong with greed. Mm -hmm. So if we look at, you know, even Madam C.J. Walker, the more money I make, the more people I can help. First African-American millionaire. These are things that individuals have done for years and centuries. Understanding the greater good of society comes from in, in, in empowering oneself. And that's what financial literacy really does. It allows you to put yourself on a better platform. And that's what the book is about. The, and it gives testimonies of gang members that we've helped to form businesses. Right. I mean, I wouldn't have helped any gang member if my own company was not in a better place. You know, uh, my mother helped us out, you know, single parent raising two children on subsidized living. She decided that she had to make sure that in order to get off of the, 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 the support from the government, had to make sure that she had to become fiscally responsible. Couldn't afford the clothes at Saks Fifth, but she would look at Saks Fifth, look at Nordstrom's, and you see all the recent styles, but then she'd go back across the tracks and she would buy stuff from the resale shop for 5 and $10. <laughs> Absolutely. So <laughs> these are the things that she did in order to make sure that we had a better lifestyle that she could afford to do for us. And that's what we have to understand. I mean, there's a, a huge industry going on right now where people are starting to capitalize off of our ignorance. And there's nothing wrong with being ignorant, but there's something wrong with staying ignorant. And so if we stay ignorant, there'd be somebody coming along saying, well, I can make money off of you because yeah, you're living check to check. You are, uh, you're not even living check to check. You're living check to Tuesday, you know? <laughs> and so what are we doing? Oh, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and open up this check cash in place because uh, they don't really know about opening up bank accounts. But even though they're living check to Tuesday, we can still take 5% of each and every one of their checks. Or so they don't know about the, the other way to do it. You know what? These folks, man, they want to they wanna go in and buy big screen televisions. Let's go in and, as opposed to do what we did and had the black and white television, you know, what my mother used to have, that we used to change the channel with the pliers and all that stuff, you know? Um, so as, as opposed to doing that, they would say, let's get a 50 inch big screen television and that may be worth $2,000, but after you pay all these fees at Renter Center, you're paying $7,000. So let's go ahead and offer it to them right now so they can say, we can have this television right now. And then they got this worry-free guarantee, which is funny to me because it's almost like, you know, don't worry, we're going to come and get our stuff back if you don't pay the bill. <laughs> and it's just, these are the things that they're capitalizing off of us because we just don't know. And once we know, we better we do better. But, but how frustrating.